Planet Oat non-dairy frozen dessert. Mmm, tastes like creamy, dreamy bliss. Like your favorite song. Like the morning sun on your face. <laughs> like riding a unicorn over a rainbow of hope. <laughs> Sorry, it's just that Planet Oat non-dairy frozen dessert tastes like everything you've ever wanted in a non-dairy frozen dessert. Planet Oat non-dairy frozen dessert in six flavors like chocolate peanut butter swirl. So delicious and creamy, it tastes like having it all. Oh, or like puppies wrapped in heart-shaped cozy blankets and little tiny kittens knitting each other's sweaters with their little tiny hands. It's okay if you're wondering. Is the COVID-19 vaccine safe for people like me? And when you're ready, here's your answer. It was tested by adult volunteers of different ages, races, genders, ethnicities, and health conditions. Tens of thousands of people, a group as diverse as California itself. And thanks to them, we know the vaccine is safe. Let's get you there. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's up, everybody, and happy Friday. Hope you're all having a fantastic morning so far. Probably having a better morning than old Billy Boy Gates, that's for sure. This dude and his ginormous fortune, not protected by a prenup, and the floodgates are starting to open about some of the things that occurred in Bill Gates' life. You know, this is one of those guys who's been protected, right? The legacy media never called him out about this Epstein stuff, never really held his feet to the fire. I mean, you had very few people talking about this dude as far as his relationship with Epstein. But everybody knew it was a lot deeper, and he was a lot closer to Epstein than he was letting on. I mean, anybody who's followed the case uh, closely, all of the people that were close to Bill Gates that were also close to Epstein, the executor who wasn't, you know what I mean? There's just so much there. And once again, the the, the, the legacy media has failed. Not only the survivors, but everyone out there that relies on them to dig deep into stories like this and to expose stuff like this. They're way too busy trying to collect collect scalps in their game of tribalism. Thankfully, there's some people who have their eye on the ball. Thankfully, there are some people who write for publications, who have large followings on places like Twitter, who have completely bypassed the legacy media and have taken this story directly to the people. And I think moving forward in the future that you're going to see a lot more of this because the legacy media, they don't hold anyone accountable anymore. They have like this symbiotic relationship with all of the people that they should be investigating. So it's a huge conflict of interest. And if it wasn't for the independent media... We wouldn't know half the shit that we know these days. So with that said, let's jump into this article from the Daily Beast from Lachlan Cartwright, who I don't give enough credit to. I need to give him some props as well because he's been powering through this case with uh, Kate over there at the Daily Beast for quite some time, and he's done great work. So shout out to Lachlan as well for pounding this this story out. You know, it's a long story, right? A lot of twists and turns, hard to keep up. But they've done a really good job over at the Daily Beast, and they should definitely get credit for staying on top of it and having a good, long history of exposing this sick bastard and all of his disgusting friends. Headline, Melinda Gates warned Bill about Jeffrey Epstein. Authored by Lachlan Cartwright, and Kate Bricklett over at the Daily Beast. Melinda Gates met with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein alongside her husband Bill in New York City and soon after said she was furious at the relationship between the two men, according to people familiar with the situation. You blame her? I mean, imagine, put yourself in that position as his wife, as Bill Gates' wife. What are you doing, bro? You're hanging out with a convicted sex offender? You're Bill effing Gates. That's what you would say if he was a normal guy, right? But, unfortunately, it's obvious Bill Gates is at the very least a fellow traveler. 
That's right, 100% a fellow traveler in my opinion. The previously unreported meeting occurred at Epstein's Upper East Side Mansion in September 2013. On the same day, the couple accepted the Lasker Bloomberg Public Service Award at the Pierre Hotel and were photographed alongside then-Mayor Mike Bloomberg. So again, look, how many times are we going to see after the fact unreported meeting, unreported this, unreported that? It's obvious that there is a lot of unreported meetings between Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Gates. This is, this is the kind of thing that cements it, though, right? And with this divorce happening, I'm sure you're going to see even more stuff like this come out. His soon-to-be ex-wife is going to want to paint the picture of Bill Gates being a dirtbag, probably, right? I mean, I don't know if they're having, like, you know, an amiable split or what the deal is. But if it gets hot, you could expect there to be a lot of rumors to come out, right? You see that all the time from one camp or the other. And I think you want to talk about an Achilles heel. If Bill Gates has a a closer relationship or had a closer relationship with Jeffrey Epstein than previously reported and his wife knows about it and they get into like this, you know, split where it's filled with acid and, you know, all sorts of uh, basically hate, then who knows what could be exposed about their relationship. But already you're seeing stuff trickle out right here. The meeting would prove a turning point for Gates' relationship with Epstein, the people familiar with the matter say, as Melinda told friends after the encounter how uncomfortable she was in the company of the wealthy sex offender and how she wanted nothing to do with him. So now you see they're getting divorced, right? Obviously, Gates and uh, his wife Melinda here, soon to be ex-wife, and the dirt is starting to spill. The tea is starting to spill. And I'm sure there are so many more skeletons in this closet. And imagine being a guy and your wife saying to you, look, I'm not comfortable with this relationship. You shouldn't be hanging out with him. And imagine disregarding how your wife feels and still hanging out with that person. Now, I could understand if it wasn't, you know, if your wife was just trying to be controlling, right? All right, I get it. But she's giving you good advice, bro. And if you're not taking advice from your wife, who the hell are you taking advice from? So, Bill Gates' whole entire story about how he just wasn't close to Epstein, they weren't friendly, it's all crumbling right before his eyes, just like the rest of his life. Gates' friendship with Epstein, who for years was accused of molesting scores of underage girls, still haunts Melinda, according to friends of the couple who spoke to the Daily Beast this week in light of the pair's divorce announcement, which had been weeks in the making. So, their friendship was close, they they were close enough, folks, okay, that the relationship between Bill Gates and Jeffrey Epstein still haunts Melinda Gates to this day. What does that even mean? We're going to need to get some uh, some deeper thought on that because what sort of relationship did these guys have that, that haunts her? Now, it's obvious from what we know previously and now you add this on top of the shit pile and it's obvious they were a lot closer than Gates stated, just like um, Leon Black, right? A lot closer. And that's the MO we've seen from all of these people. Oh, I really didn't know what's going on. No, come on, I had no idea. How can you say I knew what was going on? Well, the guy was a convicted sex offender, you schmo. You should have known. The Daily Beast has learned that financial and public relations specialists had been feverishly working on details of the pair's split for weeks before the couple announced their divorce on Monday. All right, I'm going to get off track here for just a second. Is that really even love? I mean, who would want to be engaged in that kind of relationship? I need my public affairs specialist to manage my breakup for my wife. I mean, who are these people? Do they share your values? Do they share your outlook on life or how you go about things with your family? They certainly don't share my values or the way I look at things. 
I mean, the whole thing's just just so gross. You're going to break up and divorce your wife. Your wife's going to divorce you. Fine. But all the other BS is just so weird to me. We have to have public relations specialists involved. And I don't know. It's just so foreign to me that I don't even begin to understand anything like that. I'm a very private person, especially with my personal life like that. And, you know, look, everybody has issues in their relationship. Nobody's relationship is 100% never bumpy or rough or hard. But if you need, like, public relations experts involved, then were you really ever even in love, or was it just, like, something of convenience, right? Again, I, I, you know, I don't know for sure. I don't know Bill Gates or Melinda Gates. They might have been madly in love. But for me, with, with all of these people in the so-called level of the elite, everything seems so robotic, so, so forced, right? Almost like they're incapable of real love or compassion or empathy. After a great deal of thought and a lot of work on our relationship, we have made the decision to end our marriage, the two said in a brief statement posted on Twitter. We have raised three incredible children and built a foundation that works all over the world to enable all people to lead healthy, productive lives. Whatever that means. Okay, great. More philanthropy from the the so-called elite. Here, look at my little project where I'm helping a few people out. Meanwhile, I'm absolutely stealing and and heisting every single dollar that should be getting taxed. And All right, all right, I digress. I know, I know. A representative for Bill and Melinda Gates did not respond to requests for comment for this story. Uh, yeah, they, had, they, they put out their Twitter, their, their Twitter uh, comment. That's enough, folks, all right? Here's an idea. Save the Twitter comment. Save all of it. Keep it in-house. Figure out your divorce and keep it moving. The ties between Gates and Epstein ran much deeper than the tech mogul first admitted. Well, you don't say. How long have we been screaming that off of the rooftops? In the independent media, people who are covering this case? People like the Twitter user uh, Zini Yardine? You know, people with rooftops. Where's the legacy media been? As the New York Times reported, starting in 2011, Gates met with Epstein on numerous occasions. This was three years after Epstein pleaded guilty to soliciting an underage girl in Florida. By then, accusations that Epstein exploited girls and young women were widely reported in the press. And now I will give New York Times their props, right? They have done some decent work in this case. Enough to make it look like they care, right? Just enough to make it look like they give a little bit of a damn. But with all of those resources, and all of the dumbass stories you see them writing on a daily basis that really do the society no good, how about if they put some of that vigor, some of that effort, into exposing more of this Epstein case? You know, we're, we're lining up for a huge trial here. Big time trial. You would think there would be a fervor amongst the legacy media to be the first to dig in here and expose more ties. But we don't see that from too many of them, do we? You have to ask yourself, why is that? As the Times reported, two people close to Gates acted as intermediaries between the two. Boris Nikolic, a biotech investor and former advisor to Gates, who was mysteriously named a backup executor in Epstein's last will and testament? Oh, mysteriously, huh? Another one who's escaped the look. Another one who hasn't had the, the spotlight shined on him close enough. Why would Epstein name you as an executor, bro, if you guys weren't close? Stop the BS. Stop trying to lie. Stop trying to gaslight everybody and come correct. And Melanie Walker, who worked at the Gates Foundation and served as a science advisor to Epstein. And remember, Melanie Walker is the neuroscience surgeon who was also with Prince Andrew at Zorro Ranch. You know, the one who came in and asked for the herbal tea for arousal purposes and shit. Yeah, that Melanie Walker. I mean, what? She worked at the Gates Foundation. I mean... These people think they're smooth, but guess what? 
The story is there for you if you want to put the pieces together. And Melanie Walker, who worked at the Gates Foundation and served as a science advisor to Epstein. A person close to Walker told the Daily Beast she did not attend nor help set up any meetings between Gates and Epstein. Nikolic did not return multiple requests for comment. You know, maybe, Kate, next time you guys uh, get somebody to respond to you, because none of these people want to respond to me, that's for sure. One, maybe if you can get one of these people to respond to you, you can ask them about the whole Zorro Ranch situation with Melanie and Prince Andrew and what she was doing there and what the situation was. Doesn't seem like anybody really wants to talk about that stuff. Certainly not with me. I can't get emails answered from any of these people. Soon after Epstein's arrest in July 2019... Gates became one of many prominent people to face scrutiny over ties to the sex trafficker. Not hard enough looks, right? Not a hard enough look. Not, not hard enough scrutiny. The New York Times revealed Gates had met with Epstein at a 2011 get-together at Epstein's Manhattan townhouse that included the financier, pedophile's ex-girlfriend, Eva Anderson Dubin, and her daughter. Virginia Roberts, a survivor of Epstein's sex ring, has accused Dubin's hedge fund husband, Glenn, of abuse, a charge he strenuously denies. Very nicely done, Kate and Lachlan. Adding that to the story because it's pertinent. It's important. All right? We don't... Look, nobody could say what happened there besides Virginia and these people. I tend to believe what Virginia has to say. But these people, they aren't even, you're not even, there's not even an investigation. I mean, come on, these are serious charges. And we know Epstein was up to no good. So it's that huge of a throw of the rock to believe that these people were really doing this and that what Virginia is saying is true? The facts align, folks. And all of these people, Glenn Dubin, Les Wexner, uh, Minsky, and the rest of them, all of these people need to be sat down and spoken to under oath. Indeed, the Times reported Gates visited Epstein multiple times from 2011 to 2013, and that Epstein had tried pitching a new charitable fund to J.P. Morgan Honchos and to the Gates Foundation. In 2013, Gates also took a ride on Epstein's private jet, christened by tabloids the Lolita Express, from Teterboro Airport in New Jersey to Palm Beach, Florida, according to flight records reviewed by the Times. CNBC also reported that Gates rendezvoused with Epstein in New York in 2013. Yeah, and those were the only times it happened, folks, all right? Just those couple of times. Believe me, I'm Bill Gates. Why would I lie to you? I would never tell you a story. I would never lie to you. What? I know, speaking for myself, because that's the only person I'm uh, uh, willing to speak for, I don't believe a word this guy says. Just another scumbag in the so-called elite category who thinks they know better for our lives, my life, your life, people around the world. Another obscenely rich man who has never really worked a day in his life, never strapped up them work boots, never had a lunchbox, never came home with a sore back, broken finger, broken toe, still had to get up and go to work the next day. So miss me with your bullshit, Bill Gates, okay? When Gates first met Epstein, he was still Microsoft's chairman and the second richest person in the world with a net worth of $56 billion. That's billion with a B, folks. Talk about obscenely rich. And look, you know me. I don't fault people for being rich. Go out and get yours. Get your hustle. That's what it's all about. Providing for you and your family a comfort zone so you don't have to worry about the bullshit. There's a pandemic. There. So what? I'm insulated. I'm protected. My family's protected. Awesome. But do you have to be a scumbag to do it? I mean, really? And if, it's, if you have to sell your soul, basically, and be a scumbag, is it worth it? Not to me. Rich to me is having a healthy family and enough money to maintain myself. Some investments, some breathing room, my bills paid, my girlfriend able to do whatever she wants to do. And, you know, just a, 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 a nice, comfortable life. $56 billion? We're talking obscene amount of money. 
and you're hanging out with Jeffrey F- Epstein. Jeffrey effing Epstein. I met him. I didn't have any business relationship or friendship with him, Gates said in September 2019, as media coverage into his connections with Epstein were heating up. That's a lie. Your wife just admitted that your friendship with him made her, dis- made her sick, so you're busted and caught right there. What else are you lying about? You know, once we go down this road, he's obviously lying about several things with Epstein. What all is he really lying about, folks? And I think that is the puzzle that needs to be solved at this point. I didn't go to New Mexico or Florida or Palm Beach or any of that. There were people around him who were saying, hey, if you want to raise money for global health and get more philanthropy, he knows a lot of rich people. Wait, the guy is worth $56 billion. How much money do you have to raise? You give away a bunch of money every year, right? So you need Jeffrey Epstein? Guy's only worth a billion. One fifty-sixth of your net wealth. You really need him, huh? What's the real reason you're hanging out with him, Billy boy? I highly doubt it's to get money from him, okay? Just like I highly doubt Leon Black was chilling with him to get advice. You dudes are going to need a better narrative. Every meeting where I was with him were meetings with men. I was never at any parties or anything like that. He never donated any money to anything that I know about. Uh, lies, lies, and more lies. And so what? You're only at parties with men? What does that even mean? Is that supposed to be like some cover that you weren't involved in anything? Again, the whole Bill Gates thing has smelled from the very jump, folks. The guy is smarmy. He comes off as somebody who is trying to duck and dodge. And he has this smug look about him that I just cannot stand. One associate in the technology world who's attended the same events as Epstein, including a TED conference in Monterey, California, was surprised Gates had considered cultivating philanthropic ties with the late pedophile. First of all, Monterey, California is absolutely beautiful. If you've never been there and you want to check out a a piece of California that is absolutely incredibly beautiful, the Central Coast is where it's at. I mean, wow. I spent plenty of time uh, in that general area when I was younger, um, from Pismo Beach all the way up, and uh, just an incredible place. So I could see why these guys would be hanging out there and why there would be a TED conference there. Now, as far as the TED conferences go, well, we know Epstein and... uh, All these other scoundrels were big parts of these TED conferences. They were at a lot of this stuff. The Edge Foundation, the John Brockmans. The list goes on. I can't make the claim that so many are claiming, the person told the Daily Beast, on the condition of anonymity, referring to people in Epstein's orbit who have said they had no suspicion of Epstein's abuse. If you ask Bill Gates, he'll say... Oh, I had no idea he wasn't up to anything of the highest moral character. But I seriously doubted Epstein's moral character. Thank you, anonymous person, for being correct, for coming correct, for not lying, for telling the truth. Everybody knew Epstein was a sick bastard. Now, there was a lot of people who were probably intimidated by him and his connections and his power, and I get that. Not everybody's courageous, right? Not everybody has the stones on them to stand up to these people. But that's no excuse. Sounds like a you problem. Then they compound it by saying, oh, well, we had no idea when we all know the deal. How many people have to come out and say things like this for us to know that these people knew? Furthermore, if you hung out with them after the conviction, you knew. The people around him, the person added, referring to Epstein, had a varying spectrum of what they knew and what they didn't know, and how they rationalized it. 100%. Everybody had at least a level of of knowing what was what. They accepted it. That's how it is in New York, upper crust. The only crime is to be poor. This person wasn't surprised that Melinda Gates was put off by Epstein, saying a lot of people were uncomfortable with Epstein completely independent of his sexual misconduct. He just was an obnoxious guy. He almost made a point of having bad manners, not paying attention at dinner, 
I could see how anybody, even without suspicions, would not want to be around him. Yeah, well, I get it. The dude was a brute. Nowhere near as smart as other people say, or charismatic. I don't. I never bought that line of thinking. This is more in line with the way I think of Epstein. A guy that's a brute with a bunch of money that quote-unquote muscles his way into a room, throwing around his power, his money, his connections. Still, Epstein had a superhuman ability as a social climber. The one-time colleague of the financier, pedophile, said, adding that the photos displayed in Epstein's mansion of former President Bill Clinton and Pope John Paul II were really obnoxious, especially if you're somebody like Melinda and hanging around with heads of state anyway. Then, to have someone do this endless name-dropping? I'm glad that this person's saying the same thing I say all the time. That's a big-time power move to have those kind of pictures, paintings, hanging on your wall. You're flexing on an ex-president of the United States, who was considered at one point the biggest political animal in the whole world, and you got that kind of picture hanging up on the wall? Ask Polly Walnuts what Tony Soprano thinks about putting that kind of picture up on your wall. When he got up from the table at dinner, he wouldn't just get up. He'd tell you he had a call with the president of some country. Name drop an MFR. As if anyone cares. I mean, normal people, oh cool, you got great, perfect, big deal. Can someone patch the mashed potatoes? Epstein also reportedly had a habit of bragging that he was an unofficial advisor to Bill Gates. A claim that Microsoft founders' representatives denied. One, to- one Times report indicates Epstein claimed to be a tax consultant for the Tex magnate. Look, Boris Nikolic, Melanie Walker, all of these meetings, is it too far of a step to think that maybe Epstein was advising Bill Gates behind the scenes? Well, we you know, there's no direct evidence, evidence of that, right? But these are questions that have to be asked. And I don't know why people tiptoe around this shit. After his initial meeting with the financier, pedophile, the billionaire philanthropist told Gates Foundation staff in an email, His lifestyle is very different and kind of intriguing, although it would not work for me. Um, intriguing? The guy is a convicted sex offender. Say it with me, Bill Gates. Maybe, can you say it in binary, perhaps? Asked about this message, Gates' spokeswoman said he was referring only to the unique decor at Epstein's Manhattan mansion and Epstein's habit of spontaneously bringing acquaintances in to meet Mr. Gates. What does that even mean? Save the word salad, okay? Nobody's nobody's buying that narrative, that BS garbage. Here's a question, point blank. Was Bill Gates, or wasn't Bill Gates, boys with Jeffrey Epstein? Answer that question under oath. The rapport between Gates and Epstein Epstein seems to have fizzled in the fall of 2014, sometime after Gates donated $2 million to MIT's Media Lab. The lab's former director, Joy Ito, in an internal email unearthed by The New Yorker, claimed Epstein facilitated that donation. As the Times investigation noted, Mr. Epstein complained to an acquaintance at the end of 2014 that Mr. Gates had stopped talking to him, according to a person familiar with the discussion. Ah, did you guys have a bit of a blow-up? No, you guys weren't BFFs anymore? And again, the cynic in me says that's BS. They probably still were friends behind the scenes. We know Epstein liked to, you know, facilitate all sorts of falsehoods. Gates wasn't Epstein's only link to Microsoft. Walker, a neurosurgeon who worked for the Gates Foundation from late 2005 to 2013, had known Epstein since 1992. She told the Times that she had just graduated from college and Epstein had offered to land her a modeling job at Victoria's Secret because he was an advisor to Les Wexner, the founder of the lingerie chain's parent company, L Brands. Yeah, you know, but he had nothing to do with, with Victoria's Secret. According to them, you know, Epstein could have never used his position to help abuse girls. That was the official position from L. Brands. We all know that was also a lie. Walker once stayed in an Epstein-owned apartment in Manhattan 
While traveling to New York and in 1998, she became the financier, pedophile's science advisor. What does Epstein need a science advisor for? All right? I mean, are you kidding me right now? It's unbelievable that an idiot like this thinks he needs a science advisor. What was she really doing? What was she acting as? What was her real capacity? Within a few years, she moved to Seattle to be with her current partner, then Microsoft executive Steven Sanofsky, and was hired by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. There, she met Nikolic, the Times report adds, and introduced him to Epstein. For his part, Nikolic told Bloomberg News he was shocked to be named as a successor executor in Epstein's will, a position he quickly turned down. I was not consulted in these matters, and I have no intent to fulfill these duties whatsoever he said in a statement released by his spokeswoman in August of 2019. The question is, why would Epstein think to even add Nikolic there? That's a question that hasn't been answered, right? One that hasn't been asked enough, probably. Why were you even in the running? Why are you even being considered if you're not close with Epstein? Nikolic is a graduate of Harvard Medical School, where at least one faculty member received funding that was facilitated by Epstein. According to Bloomberg, Nikolic waxed enthusiastic about Epstein's financial advice in discussions with private bankers. In 2014, ahead of a public offering for a genome editing, firm Nikolic had funded. Oh, shocker, huh? So, it's obvious that these two dudes were a lot closer than stated. He was probably the pivot man, the go-between with uh, Bill Gates. And they were probably all in cahoots working on whatever sort of sorted, weird-ass project they were working on. Do I have direct evidence of that? No. But my spidey sense is tingling. Little is known about Nikolic and Epstein's relationship. Though Bloomberg reported the biotech venture capitalist insisted they had no financial ties. another, Another one, right? Venture capitalist, hedge fund manager. But it might as well just be titled Money Launderer, Potential Money Launderer, Tax Evader, General All Around Scuzzball. Meanwhile, Linda Stone, an ex Microsoft VP, appears to have longer standing ties to Epstein and vouched for him at MIT. Ito, who was introduced to Epstein in February 2013 by Linda Stone, a former member of the Media Labs Advisory Council, at a TED conference in Long Beach, California, said one 2020 MIT report into Epstein's largesse reviewed by the Daily Beast. So, how many more ties does this idiot have to have to Microsoft, to Bill Gates' closest people, for the legacy media to really dive in here? Because it's rather obvious what's going on. Rather obvious that Epstein had Big-time connections to Microsoft, big-time connections to the inner circle, and obviously big-time connections to the grand pooba himself, Mr. Billy Boy Gates. He has a tainted past, but Linda assures me that he's awesome, Ito said in an email to three MIT staffers, according to the document. But in June 2013, when a lab assistant raised questions about Epstein's checkered past, Ito asked Stone for help in avoiding a potential backlash over Epstein's donations to the MIT Media Lab. In an email cited in the MIT report, Stone advised Ito that Epstein had given a tremendous amount of money to Harvard and other scientists, and it would be good to show that list. So... All right, basically just rat on everybody else who got some money. Let's go ahead and put everybody on blast to make it look like we're not so scummy. Kind of the same thing Dershowitz did, huh? When he said, well, I was with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Engaged? Excited to be able to celebrate with your loved ones? Crush wedding planning with Zola. Zola has everything couples need all in one place and all online. Think wedding vendors, invitations, free websites, and registry. Start by finding wedding vendors in your area. Then explore beautiful save the dates. For peace of mind, you'll get free change the dates with your purchase. Add a free matching website to keep guests updated about your big day. You can even host virtual events on it for free. 
Build a registry that lives on your website, too. Fill it with the best gifts, cool experiences, and cash funds for a puppy, charity, or a new home. Weddings are coming back, and Zola's got your back. Join over 1 million couples and go to Zola.com slash love today. Use promo code SAVE50 for 50% off your save the dates. And get free personalized samples before you purchase. That's Zola.com slash love, code SAVE50. As if that precludes him from being involved in what he's accused of. Focus on the funding of Harvard scientists over many years, added Stone, whose tenure at Microsoft lasted from 93 to 2002. She then mentioned Epstein and aggressively funds science and tech and interesting people. The report notes that Stone apparently believed Epstein when he insisted to her that he was wrongfully convicted, pointing both to his light sentence and his assertion that he had been cleared by a lie detector test as evidence that he was truly innocent of the charges. I mean, you have to want to believe that, to believe that. Nobody that's looking at something critically hears that BS and says, ah, oh, yeah, you know, that sounds about right. Wrongfully convicted, ah, that's, that's it, Jeff, old Jeffers. Talk about absolutely moronic thinking, that anyone's going to believe that. Epstein's address book contained multiple phone numbers for Stone and listed Kelly Bavino, a former model whose sources tell the Daily Beast was once part of Epstein's inner circle, as Stone's emergency contact. As Daily Beast reported, Roberts has publicly accused Bovino of aiding Epstein's trafficking scheme. Look, I don't know how many more people have to be outed by people like Virginia, the Farmer Sisters, and Courtney, and others before, you know, all of these other people on the peripherals are starting to get a deeper, harder look. But what time is better than now? The tech insider who spoke to the Daily Beast noted Stone thrived on connecting people, but that she has a lot of friends who are infinitely richer than Epstein. They added, I can't see anything Linda got out of it. And I I mentioned earlier Twitter user uh, Zini Yardeen and uh, there's a, in this article, there's a, a repost of one of her tweets, and it's a picture of Epstein and Nathan Mirvold, Microsoft's chief technology officer uh, at a 2000 Edge Foundation dinner. And he was the ex chief technology officer at Microsoft. Not anymore, by the way. So obviously this link will be in the description box. Make sure you click on it, go and check out her Twitter feed and all this other stuff as well. Epstein's Rolodex also had a variety of phone numbers for Nathan Mirvold, Microsoft's former chief technology officer. In July 2019, Vanity Fair reported the men were longtime friends and that Epstein allegedly visited Mirvold's investment firm, Intellectual Ventures, with young girls who were possibly Russian models in tow. Another hedge fund, huh? These guys are so fantastic. I mean, absolute pillars of the community, folks. Aren't you glad that society is just littered with these people? In 2003, Vanity Fair named Mirvold as one of the many businessmen to dine with Epstein at his Manhattan townhouse. And the 2019 article cites a source who claimed Mirvold openly discussed visiting Epstein's homes in Florida and New York. So again, another one of these Microsoft people who have obviously close ties to Epstein, obviously were part of the circle, and obviously knew what was up. A flight records database shows Mirvold traveled on Epstein's plane in December 1996 and January 1997. Other passengers included Harvard law professor Allen, I kept my underpants on Dershowitz, and GM, believed to be Epstein's alleged accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell. Well, there you go, huh? Alan Dershowitz, he, he only goes with the cream of the crop, folks. He only flies with talented scientists and men of business and magnates, as if those people are above board, like they're excluded from people who can be sick, disgusting individuals. When Robert sued Dershowitz for defamation in April 2019, her complaint alleged fame lawyer attempted to throw Mirvold under the bus. 
The document refers to Roberts by her maiden name. In May 2015, Dershowitz requested confidential settlement negotiations with Miss Roberts' lawyers, in which Dershowitz sought to convince, convince Miss Roberts' lawyers that Miss Roberts was mistaken and that the person whom Epstein had lent Miss Roberts to was Nathan Mirvold, not Dershowitz. I mean, how are you going to tell somebody that they're mistaken about something like that? What, what a set of stones on this Dershowitz guy. Hiding a real big set of uh, set of stones in those depends. The lawsuit added that Roberts was and is clear that it was Dershowitz, not Mirvold, with whom she had sex. Mirvold's spokesperson told Vanity Fair, Nathan has no knowledge of or any involvement in the various crimes that Mr. Epstein is accused of committing. No, never. You guys never hung out. You had no idea. Another person who had no idea, folks. Mark it down, pack it up, bring it all home, the investigation's over. He was never a client of his money management business, and he never done business with him of any sort, the spokesperson added. Back in the day, Epstein was a regular at TED conferences, and he was a large donor to basic scientific research. So while Nathan knew him, and has socialized with him, that's exactly where this association ends. Oh, well, that makes up for it. And another thing, the fact that Epstein was at all of these TED Talks and was always invited to all of this shit should go to show you, once again, that the only crime is being poor with these people. You can get away with anything. When you're part, when you're part of the, the men of always, you think you can do whatever you want to the children of never. But I got news for you. One of these days, the children of Never are going to show up and overturn the apple cart. Mirvold did, however, take a trip to Russia with tech journalist and conference host Esther Dyson sometime in the 1990s and spent time with Epstein there. I am sure that is the only time they ever hung out. Come on, folks. That's it. The only time. When reached by the Daily Beast... Dyson said Epstein joined her and Mirvold for a couple of days when their itineraries intersected in Sarov. The Microsoft executive had planned the meetup with the financier, she said. Pedophile. So again, Mirvold obviously is in deep with Epstein, another guy who was boys with him for years and years and years. Now, I'm not saying he took part in the abuse. If one of the survivors says that, then they, that's, what, that's, that's their allegation, but I haven't heard that yet. But again, another enabler, another person in Bill Gates' circle. Why is Bill Gates lying about his relationship with Epstein? What is Bill Gates trying to hide? One photo Dyson posted on social media of herself and Epstein is timestamp 1998. Another image of Mirvold includes the caption, At Microsoft Russia in Moscow, April 98. This was the beginning of a three-week trip during, the, during which Nathan and a variety of hangers-on, including a bodyguard, explore, explored the state of post-Soviet science. Must have been an interesting trip. Right after communism fell, you know, so, uh, the Soviet Union, Russia, going through all them changes. I've always been fascinated by that. Years later, Dyson saw Epstein at Edge dinners and other events, but says she didn't have much interaction with him. I wasn't his category, so to speak, Dyson told the Daily Beast. He liked rich people and scientists, and there were a lot of them at Edge dinners. Well, there's no doubt about that. We've talked about the Edge Foundation and John Brockman a lot here. And this article, these new revelations, just go to show you, folks, that Bill Gates and his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein was a lot closer than he has ever told anybody. His own wife told him that his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein as a friend was not a good idea. What more do you need to know? If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. To all of you who have donated to the podcast in the past and recently, thank you very much. And as far as me, I will be back later on tonight if there's some more news to talk about. If not, 
I will be back tomorrow morning. Have a great Friday, everyone. It's okay if you're wondering how the COVID-19 vaccine got here so fast. It was record time after all. And when you're ready, here's your answer. No steps were skipped. No shortcuts were taken. Years of research and determination paid off. Let's get you there. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Shop Howard's Memorial Day Savings. Save up to 34% on appliances, TVs, and mattresses. Buy a Whirlpool Top Load Laundry Pair for $14.34.99 or an LG Front Load Laundry Pair for $13.44.99. Get a GE French Door Refrigerator for $19.99.99 and a KitchenAid Dishwasher for just $9.89.99. Free box spring or upgrade to an adjustable base for just $99 when you buy any Rastonic Queen mattress. Open a new Howard's card and earn a $100 prepaid gift card. Get free next day delivery now through June 9th. Visit Howard's.com for more details.